The right time versus the wrong time. There's the right time and the wrong time. The right time is free time, indentured time is the wrong time. The slow lane ransoms time, time at the job and time invested in the markets. Remember, five indentured days for two free days is a bad trade. A financial plan with time as the adjudicator is not a good financial plan. If you were born into slavery, your life would be 100% indentured time with 0% free time. While total time can't be manipulated, you can manipulate your time ratio. Wouldn't it be nice to have one day of indentured time and six days of free time? If you can steal free time from the hands of indentured time, life will have more of the right time versus the wrong time. Dump the junk in the trunk. If you race cars at the drag strip, you know that every ounce of weight counts. Racers remove everything non-essential to make the car as light as possible. This increases efficiency, speed, and performance, resulting in faster finishes. Unnecessary weight forces the car to work harder. Yet on our road trip to wealth, we're guilty of adding. Weight. Our vehicle is burdened with junk in the trunk that coerces us to work harder. And when you work harder long enough, it wears you out and breaks you down. This debilitating weight is parasitic debt. Parasitic debt is everything you owe the world. It is the excrement of lifestyle servitude. Your shiny new infinity financed at 60 monthly payments, your home mortgage financed over 30 years, your fancy designer clothes for months removed from out of fashion, and yes, even that insidious furniture that seemed like such a good idea at the time. All of this crap creates servitude and forces indentured. Time. When you're forced to work, you limit choice, and limited choices close roads. Aside from my mother's creepy doll collection, nothing is more frightening than a parasite leech to my neck, sucking my blood. Parasitic debt is a counterweight to your road trip, it's a bloodsucker that steals free time, energy, freedom, and health, all foes to true wealth. Parasitic debt consumes free time The leading cause of indentured time is parasitic debt. Surely you've heard the phrase. Thief of hearts. When it comes to parasitic debt, it is the thief of lives. Parasitic debt is a gluttonous pig that gorges on free time and shits it out as indentured time. Any debt that forces you to work is expensed from free time and shifts it to indentured time. Debt needs a constant drip of blood, and that blood comes from your gas tank of life, time. And since time is fixed, an increase in indentured time comes from only one source, your free time. The cost of parasitic debt. The average American owes more than they are worth. Having a lifestyle built on credit creates lifestyle servitude in the form of indentured time. And because total time is finite, indentured time grows by pilfering from free time. Indentured time leads to the sidewalk. The next time you buy some fancy gadget on credit, know exactly what you are buying. You're buying parasitic debt that eats free time and excretes it into indentured time. For example, if you buy an audio system that costs $4,000 and you make $10 per hour, what's the real price? What is the weight of the poop? That price is 400 hours of your free time, since you must work 400 hours times $10 per hour to repay the debt. Add 10% interest and your final cost stacks up to 440 hours of your free time added to your weight burden. So next time you whip out the visa, calculate. The real cost. How much free time is this going to cost me? Everything we buy has not one cost, but two. One, the actual dollar cost. 2. The free time transformed into indentured time. The law of chocolate chip cookies. When I first moved out on my own, I quickly learned the law of chocolate chip cookies. If the cookies don't get into the grocery cart, they don't get home. And if they don't get home, they don't get in my mouth. And if they don't get in my mouth, they don't transform into belly fat. Parasitic debt follows the same law. Control parasitic debt by controlling its source, instant gratification, a trait of the sidewalk. The next time you feel compelled to buy some trinket at Macy's, ask yourself, will this be obsolete in six months and land in the garage with the rest of the junk? In four months, will this stupid tribal t-shirt be relegated to that dusty side of the closet reserved for? Painting smocks? Again, when you purchase the next greatest fashion fad without truly being able to afford it, you open the floodgates to parasitic debt that flows downstream to the sidewalk. If the cost of that product doesn't make it to your credit card, it doesn't become parasitic. You become a protector of free time. Think. Will this purchase take freedom? Will I own this or will it own me? 
While some choose servitude behind iron bars, others choose servitude behind velvet walls. Both are the same. The ultimate wealth is having the free time to live how you want to live. The fast lane is about being both lifestyle rich as well as time rich. A poor valuation of free time leads to poorness. Rich or poor, time is equally possessed, shared, and consumed by all. Every day you use it. I use it. Your neighbor uses it. No one gets more and no one gets less. 24 hours for everybody. No one has an unfair advantage. You, me, we all have 24 hours to consume, expire, and spend. Time is the ultimate equalizer. Then why do so few get rich while the rest wallow from paycheck to paycheck? The distinction lies in the valuation of free time, the chosen roadmap, and the acquisition of parasitic debt. Guess the behaviors rich or poor. This person sleeps until noon. This person watches hours of reality TV. This person drives two hours to save $20. This person buys airline tickets with multiple layovers to save $100. This person spends hours surfing social networks and gossip blogs. This person is a level 10 druid in World of Warcraft. This person watches every Chicago Cubs game, just kidding, all you loyal Cubs fans. Frugal with money. Sidewalkers and slow laners use money as the sole criterion in decision making, which job pays the most? Where is the cheapest item? How can I get some free chicken? Money is scarce and time brings up the rear and sweeps up the mess. If you want to be rich, you have to start thinking rich. Time is king. Chapter Summary, Fastlane Distinctions Fastlaners regard time as the king of all assets. Time is deathly scarce, while money is richly abundant. Indentured time is time you spend to earn money. Free time is spent as you please. Your lifespan is made up of both free time and indentured time. Free time is bought and paid for by indentured time. Fastlaners seek to transform indentured time into free time. Parasitic debt eats free time and excretes it as indentured time. Lifestyle extravagances have two costs, the cost itself and the cost to free time. Parasitic debt has to be stopped at the source, instant gratification. 27. Change the dirty stale oil. Education is what remains after one has forgotten. Everything he learned in school. Albert Einstein. Change the oil every 3,000 miles. The first lesson of car ownership, change the oil every 3,000 miles. Neglect the lesson and your car dies well before its useful life. Frequent oil changes keep your car running efficiently, unchanged oil goes stale and turns the ride rough. Rough rides stall to the shoulder of the road. The fast lane road trip demands fresh oil changes. But what is oil? Oil is education. Knowledge. Street smarts. But be careful, it must be the right oil and for the right purpose. Sidewalkers don't bother with oil. After 3,000 miles they're done. Graduation is the last oil change. Slow laners oil their vehicles for the explicit purpose of raising intrinsic value. Advanced education and certifications, what's going to command? A bigger salary? Fast laners oil their vehicles until they hit the junkyard. Graduation is not the end, it is the beginning face it. What you know today is not enough to get you where you need to be tomorrow. You must constantly reinvent yourself and reinvention is education. Unfortunately, graduation traditionally signals the end of education. Regardless of your graduating age, adulthood begins. The party is over and real life begins. To cease learning at graduation is wealth suicide. Your most effective earning years happen after graduation, so wouldn't it be smart to continue the educational process long after formal schooling? Jim Gallagher graduated 11 years ago and is unemployed. Jim is a stockbroker, but because of internet technology his expertise has become endangered and flirts with extinction. Jim's education for that specific job set has become dated and no longer applies to the current world. The world has moved on, yet Jim and his education have not. Jim contemptuously takes a menial sales job at a local furniture store. His financial plan stalls because he operates with the same stale oil last changed 11 years ago. Jim fails to change his oil so Jim's road trip to wealth also fails. Education, your oil, is a critical component to your wealth road trip. 
When you continually inject yourself with new education, new skills, and new competencies, new roads open and things run smoothly. The right education has incredible horsepower. Education's role. Education is virtuous under both slow lane and fast lane roadmaps, but their roles are profoundly different. In the slow lane, education is used to elevate intrinsic value, while in the fast lane it is used to facilitate and grow the business system. Also, fast lane education is secured by methods that do not produce parasitic debt or conformity. The purpose of education within the fast lane is to amplify the power of the money tree and the business system. You're not a cog in the wheel. You learn to build the wheel. For example, if I go to a training seminar that gives me skills to a higher Top Gun sales people, I'm engaged in activities that specifically enhance the fertility of my business and my money tree. If I read a book on a new computer technology that illustrates how to create new interactive website features, I'd be learning to facilitate the system. Again, Fastlane education is to foster growth of the business system. Conversely, slow lane education is designed to specifically enhance the intrinsic value of the person receiving the education. It is to become a gear in the system. A fast lane forum user had an opportunity to pursue an MBA and he asked if it was worth it. My answer typically would be no, but this scenario was different. First, the MBA had no money cost, only time cost, as the government was paying for it. Second, this gentleman espoused the fast lane ideology so his purpose was not intrinsic value elevation but expansion of his knowledge to facilitate a fast lane system. I voted yes. I don't know how. If an oil change puts your car on a lift for months or years, what's the point? Your continued education must not come laden with conformity or parasitic debt but must facilitate your fast lane system. How? Make the real world your university. Yes, you are your own university. Ask any successful entrepreneur and they will validate this truth. You learn from engagement, from doing, and from getting out and taking repeated action. More so than from any book or professor. But I don't know how, you cry. Oh stop. Public enemy no. One of on the most used excuses list is, I don't know how. Well, why don't you know how? I'll tell you why. You don't know because you haven't taught yourself how, nor have you wanted to know how badly enough. You see, it is easier to relent under the weight of a I don't know how than it is to actively pursue the knowledge. In today's information society, there is absolutely no excuse not to find out how.